welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm your host, Frank Foster. I'm glad you're with us today because we're going to do something uniquely different. We're going to step back in time for 80 years and take a look at the four infantry divisions and the two airborne divisions and, well, the two ranger battalions that landed on Utah and Omaha Beach starting at, well, even before 6.30 landing time, 6 June 1944. We'll take a look at their shoulder sleeve insignia, the infantry regimental crest, and then we'll take a look at the badges and the medals and the ribbons that they earned. We'll say a little change up is we'll take a look at what they came home wearing and then what they're actually authorized now. And there's a difference. I think you'll find that interesting. So uh, if you enjoy these, please subscribe. It'll help us out a lot. I mean, it'll keep us on the air, if that's what I mean. And give us a like. All right, enough talk. Let's go. On June 6, 1944, known as D-Day, American forces landed on two primary beaches in Normandy, France, Utah Beach and Omaha Beach. We'll start by taking a look at Utah Beach under the command of 7th Corps. And the primary objective was to seize the beachhead and link up with airborne forces. The H hour was 0630. And the main unit involves with the 4th Infantry Division, supported by airborne units from the 82nd and 101st. There were some elements of a 90th Infantry Division that landed later in the day, but the majority of the three infantry regiments of a 90th Division did not land until the 9th or 10th. The 4th Infantry Division, led by Brigadier General Theodore Roosevelt, Jr., landed on the beach but drifted about 2,000 yards south of the intended landing zone due to strong currents. Roosevelt famously declared, we'll start the war right here. By the end of the day, the 4th Infantry Division had secured the beach and began moving inland, and they had linked up with elements of the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions who had parachuted behind the enemy lines to secure key positions and cause disruption. Shoulder sleeve insignia of the Ivy Division is a light khaki square with four green ivy leagues arranged per cross issuing from a small open circle. The four leaves allude to the numerical designation of a division, while the word Ivy, as pronounced, suggests the characters used in the formation of the Roman numerals I.B. Elite Combat Division had entered combat on 6 June 1944 and endured over 299 days of combat, taking over 22,000 casualties and earned five campaign stars as well as a bronze arrowhead for being an assault force on D-Day. There were three famous infantry regiments in the 4th Infantry Division. On your left, the 8th Infantry Regiment. And then there are two variations of the 12th Infantry Regiment. You'll see some color changes sometimes. And then the 22nd Infantry Regiment. Here's a uniform of a soldier of the 22nd Infantry Division with his regimental crest on a lapel. And take a note of the ribbons on his chest. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. Actually, almost all of the enlisted soldiers of the 4th Infantry Division would have earned at least four medals. Almost all of the enlisted soldiers of the 4th Infantry Division would have been authorized the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign Medal for their period of training in the United States, the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, uh, normally called the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal. While those that served as infantrymen or combat medics would have been authorized, the medal shown here, the Bronze Star for Meritorious Service, a Good Conduct Medal, American Campaign, the ETO Medal with the appropriate campaign stars, a Victory Medal, and if they stay 30 days or more after the end of the war, the Occupation Medal. Bronze Star for Meritorious Service was retroactively approved for all combat infantrymen and combat medics in World War II. In this case, the combat medic has also been awarded the Purple Heart and has the American Defense Medal for enlisting before the beginning of the war. The combat medic came home with just, say, three ribbons when in actuality, due to the retro award of the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service, he might have six medals. I mentioned earlier, the 90th Division did not really arrive on Utah Beach until the 9th and 10th of June. The 90th Division was activated in 1942 and had the nickname of Tough Hombres. They sort of got that from the initials on their patch, which really stand for Texas and Oklahoma, where the original troops were drawn. 
It spent over 300 days in combat and suffered over 19,000 casualties and five campaigns. In the first day, the 82nd Airborne parachuted into the area west of Utah Beach and secured several towns and a number of key bridges. In all, the division had over 422 days in combat and 9,000 casualties. The division earned a bronze arrowhead for assault landings and seven campaign stars, as shown here, a silver and two bronze if you went through all of the campaigns, which included Sicily, Naples, Rome, Normandy, the Rhineland, Ardennes, and Central Europe. The crest of its three famous infantry regiments are the 505th Airborne Infantry Regiment, then the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and the 508th Airborne Infantry Regiment. This World War II case of a veteran of the 82nd Airborne shows his Airborne badge over his Combat Infantry badge, his Bronze Star Medal, but in the far right corner you see the Belgium Croix de Guerre and the French Croix de Guerre across the war, which were foreign awards often presented. Many members of the division were also awarded the French Forger and the Belgium Forger, and this is shown how it was worn on the left sleeve. The 101st Airborne Division dropped to the south of Utah Beach to secure causeways and exits off of the beach, ensuring a smooth movement of troops inland. The 101st Airborne Division was known as the Screaming Eagles, and I couldn't resist showing a couple of their old patches along with their World War II patch. They had over 214 days of combat and 9,000-plus casualties and earned four campaign stars and an arrowhead. Three famous infantry regiments are shown here. I show two versions of the 501st Airborne insignia with the Geronimo cheer, the 502nd Airborne Infantry Regiment, and the 506th Airborne Infantry Regiment. Remember that insignia from the series Band of Brothers. This is a good time to look at some of the badges authorized airborne troops, and the first is the now obsolete glider badge. It was only used really in World War II issued to soldiers who were qualified in gliders. The three World War II parachute badges, the Basic Parachute Badge, the Senior Parachute Badge, and the Master Parachute Badge. Master Parachute Badge is an example. Combat jumps were identified by adding bronze stars to the parachute badge. A fifth combat jump, which was indicated with a gold star in the center of the parachute. The most prestigious of the World War II badges was the Combat Infantry Badge, as shown in the upper left. Over the years, additional awards have been indicated by adding stars to the top. The first award was authorized in World War II. The award of a Combat Medical Badge also meant that the recipient was authorized the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service. All of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers who landed at Normandy had qualified with one of the three marksmanship badges as shown here, expert, sharpshooter, or marksman. We close out Utah Beach. I should mention that the 70th Tank Battalion was attached to the 4th Infantry Division. Omaha Beach was under the command of the 5th Corps and included the 1st Infantry Division, the 29th Infantry Division, the 2nd and 5th Ranger Battalion, the 741st Tank Battalion, which were floating tanks, unfortunately most of them sunk in the rough water, and the 743rd Tank Battalion attached to the 29th Infantry. The primary objective was to secure the beachhead and advance inland to link up with the British landing force from Gold Beach to the east. The 1st Infantry Division entered combat in 1942 and had over 430 days of combat, more than any other American division, and suffered over 20,000 casualties, including almost 5,000 men killed in action and over 12,000 wounded. It fought in five campaigns during World War II and earned the nickname The Fighting First. The division had three combat regiments, the 16th Infantry Regiment, the 18th Infantry Regiment, and the 26th Infantry Regiment. The artillery in the division was composed of battalions from the 5th Artillery, the 7th Field Artillery, the 32nd Field Artillery, the 6th Battalion of the 15th Artillery, and the 2nd Battalion of the 33rd Artillery while division support forces consisted of the 1st Engineer Battalion, Medical Battalion, Supply and Transport, Maintenance, and a Military Police Company. 
I should mention that all of the D-Day divisions earned the Presidential Unit Citation, originally called Distinguished Unit Citation, which is the equivalent of an individual award of a Distinguished Service Cross. A big deal. Every soldier in the 1st Infantry Division would have been authorized at least the American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal, while over 20,000 of them earned the Purple Heart. This display shows the awards of a combat infantryman of a 1st Infantry Division to include his CIB, his Meritorious Bronze Star, and his Presidential Unit Citation, as well as Marksmanship Awards. This display sort of summarizes the medals, badges, and insignia awarded during World War II to a 1st Infantry Division, and even includes then at the very bottom the famous Ruptured Duck or Honorable Discharge Pin. After we look at the 29th Infantry Division and the two Ranger Battalions, I'll give a summary of all of the medals that are generally authorized to veterans who served on V-Day. Initial landing on Omaha Beach faced significant challenges. The beach was really heavily fortified with bunkers, artillery, machine guns, and obstacles. The 29th Infantry Division was known as the Blue and Gray Division because its patch symbolized the unity of the North and the South after the Civil War. Assault on Omaha Beach resulted in over 3,000 men killed in action, and the division suffered over 20,000 casualties during its 242 days in combat and served in Normandy, northern France, the Rhinelands, and Central Europe. The division's list of special decorations is unique, including the Presidential Unit Citation awarded for its assault on Omaha Beach, the Belgian Forger, the Luxembourg Croix de Guerre, the Netherlands Orange Lanyard, the French Croix de Guerre with Palm, the Belgian Forger, the Belgium Cross of War with Palm, and the Netherlands Military Order of William, a degree of Knight. This shows a combat infantryman of the 29th Infantry Division wearing his combat infantry badge, his Bronze Star, and the French Forger. The display on the left shows a combat infantryman of the 29th Infantry Division displaying his Forger, his combat infantry badge, his presidential unit citation, and his marksmanship badges, while on the right is a display of a combat medic. This battery commander in the 29th Infantry Division displays his French Croix de Guerre on the far right of his U.S. awards. I need to take just a moment and confirm that there are two awards of the Bronze Star Medal, for valor with a V device, or for meritorious service in combat without a V device. Second and fifth Ranger battalions were tasked with scaling the cliffs and to neutralize heavy guns that could threaten the landing. Despite heavy resistance and difficulties, they successfully accomplished their mission. Two tank battalions in the assault on Omaha Beach. The 741st Tank Battalion attached to the 1st Infantry had floating tanks. Unfortunately, they launched in heavy seas and most of them sunk. The 743rd Tank Battalion was attached to the 29th Infantry. In summary, many of the combat infantrymen and combat medics who landed on D Day were awarded the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service. Many received the Purple Heart, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the ETO Medal with a Bronze Arrowhead and Campaign Stars, the Victory Medal. For those who were there at least 30 days after the war, the Occupation Medal, successful landings on Utah and Omaha Beach marked the beginning of the end for Nazi occupation in Western Europe leading to the eventual Allied victory in Europe. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the program as much as we enjoyed putting it on for you. And special thanks to Medals of America for supporting us. If you have any questions, contact me through my channel. I will try, really seriously try to answer your questions. So see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop.